every night in every capital of the world, a half of the million people are dancing the most sophisticated and mysterious dance called Argentine Tango. The world, more than world goal, passioned and captured by the smoldering passion of the music and dance. But where, how, and when it all started? Mr. Presiding Officer, fellow Toastmasters, welcome, yes, a history of tango. Tonight I'm going to touch three main subjects. First, origination of tangle. Second, export tango to Europe. And third, Argentinian versus European style. Origination of tango. Oh, okay. In late 1800s, millions of Europeans arrived to the shore of Rio de la Plata, South America, in two main port cities, Montevideo, Uruguay, and Buenos Aires, Argentina. Mainly single men, they came to America to make a fortune and start a new life in a new continent. They brought with them their music, their instruments, and their dances. They brought the sweet sounds of violins, flamenco guitars. They brought their the mazurka as dance, the polka, the waltz. Their native dances and music met with local dance and music and melted together. The music met Cuban habanero and the rhythms of freed slaves. With a lot of women, because mostly the immigrants were men, young men arrived to the shores of America, found themselves looking for excitement in our local Bordello districts. There is a theory that tango started as a mating dance. I disagree because it's way too complicated to be a mating dance. We would have found mm -hmm. something simple. Another good point, there is a local dancer in Seattle his name is Bill Swan. He wrote a book. And the title of the book is Sex is a Raw Substitution for Tango. <laughs> <laughs> Young Argentinians found themselves on the streets of the Buenos Aires practicing the steps to the music. And this is how that started. I do not deny that a few women could be tango dancers, I mean, the night butterflies. In order to be skillful and get attention to the woman, uh, attention of the woman, uh, young men would practice steps for six months. As a matter of fact, it was very popular in the neighborhood gangs. In a deep off Buenos Aires, a young man would have practiced steps for six months before he will be shown how to lead. Don't get me wrong, that following is not 
simple. It actually requires a lot of attention. And actually, it requires to connect to a partner because tango doesn't have patterns. You don't know what is coming. You just have to feel it. And do you think it's easy to give a control to of a young man, a gangster? Are you kidding? And only after that, he wouldn't be shown how to live. It probably would be a piece of cake after that. That time, many men practicing and dancing on the streets were dancing holding the knives because sometimes it was a question of life and, and death if rival might be ending his life. As a tribute to that time, here is a funny and humorous clip. for tango to Europe. At the break of the century, Argentina became very wealthy, and lucky kids from the privileged families were able to travel to Europe. Here in Europe, they would show off their tango moves, and Europeans were shocked and impressed by the music and by the moves, and guess what, they wanted to tango. However, at that time, tango was considered to be an appropriate dance. Upper class, both in Argentina and in Europe, and middle class, shunned the tango. They thought it's not appropriate, but they wanted to dance. So in Europe, they came with sanitized version of the tango. <laughs> there is a clip of sanitized version of tango. It looks different, and you can see that body position is different too. Embrace is different. Just prior of World War I, tango was exported into North America, where till now it remains a fixture in the ballroom competition. Now we're moving on. Third subject, Argentinian versus European tango. The difference is big. The difference is a music, embrace, and the rules, it's different. Europeans modified music. When traditional Argentinian music doesn't have drums, you have to dance to the music and you have to dance to your partner. The lead originates, the follower follows, where she adopts, where is a room, then the next, <coughs> next movement going to be initiated by the lead. Embrace is close, it's very close embrace. Cheeks a head is touching. Lower part of the body is separated. <laughs> a lead is leading from the chest. It actually feels like a hug. In the European version, hips are touching. And the upper part of the body are arching apart like that. Embrace is big with elbows sticking. The head is extremely turned to the left and movements are very rapid and changing directions. In Argentinian style of dancing, there are a line of dance, and cutting in front of a dancing couple is the worst offense. In European style, where they see room, they move, and actually disrupting a dance of the rivals. It's a good business because then we win. 
And in Argentinian style, the music, as I mentioned, doesn't have drums. In European music, we know the signature of tango is drum, drum, and you know it's going to be tango. A dancing couple, dancing Argentinian style, it looks like a love dialogue between the two. It's an amazing connection, which you could not experience in any other dance. If you take a look on European style dancing, it looks more like a passion fight of the couple. <laughs> However, there is no right, there is no wrong. Now, when you know how tango was originated, how it was exported to Europe, and you know a little bit of difference between Argentinian and American style, maybe you want to take class and learn one of the styles. With the returning of democracy to Argentina, a new generation of teachers and dancers started to reclaim their heritage, Argentine tango. And every night, half of a million people in New York, Seattle, Paris, Amsterdam, Helsinki, Moscow, are dancing that mysterious and sophisticated dance started in the far off Buenos Aires. Mr. Presiding Officer. Mm -hmm.